Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Q&A and Critique number... Hang on a minute, it says 98, but this is actually number 99. Did I screw that up? Okay, well, today is Q&A and Critique number 99 when I'm here with Prashan. And Prashan has been a character artist who has worked diligently on Instagram, ArtStation, and I've known him for a little while. I met him back in the quarantine. And it has been a huge pleasure and a huge honor to get to know this artist, to see him uh, push out some quality content, not only with um, some incredible characters, some incredible renders, color balancing, details, cloth, everything, but also quantity. A huge amount of artwork has been produced by Prashant, and I'm really happy to share this time with you today. So, Prashant, how are you? Hey, Jace, thanks for having me. Yeah, great. I am doing well. Excellent. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to, before we begin, I wanted to give you a quick summary. Today's topics that we're going to be talking about is uh, learning how to, or lessons learned during dailies, and also mm -hmm. how to draw from art inspiration, how to push through when it comes to doing daily practices and artwork with character design. And maybe when I'm near the end of this, we're also going to be talking about beginning with character design. Last week, we had the honor of talking with um, Pojo, and we talked about NPR art, freelancing work, and a number of other interesting topics. So if you want to catch what we talked about last week, I highly recommend you check out episode 98. But today, we're going to continue on forwards, and let's begin. So, Prashant, I wanted to ask you, Hello. what do you... Um, let's give, let's break the ice and kind of give a bit of context to who you are, what you do, and what you're doing at the current moment. All right. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, stop me anytime and, uh, you know, ask me questions while we discuss. But, yeah, I am uh, Prashan. Um, I've... Um, Let's see, where do, we, where do I start? <laughs> yeah. So I come from, I'll say, I'll come from the engineering. Um, so I've been an engineer for about 12 years now. Um, so I mean, the mechanical mm -hmm. design. Um, but uh, I've always had an interest in art. So like, you know, having done a lot of CAD work, um, starting with 3D um, was kind of came naturally, I would say. Um, yeah, I think about five or six years ago, I started using Blender. So, so Blender was my kind of entry to this world. Um, I, I kind of came across it on the internet. Uh, and that's uh, where it kind of snowballed from there, I would say. Um, but yeah, so um, since then, um, I've... Um, I'm still working in engineering. I'm actually in medical devices right now, uh, new product development. Um, but meanwhile, um, I do some freelance work. Um, currently working on a couple of freelance projects, uh, including the the Blender Open Short Film um, Tiki, uh, run well, that's by exciting. Blender Bob. Yes, I was um, just looking at that earlier on Twitter with um, Blender Bob and his work. The Tiki film is currently being financed on Kickstarter at the moment. Mm -hmm. and he's, uh, it's a short film that's currently in production which is a kind of nice little tidbit of news that you told me about today um, mm -hmm. so what are you doing exactly for the project to some degree without spoiling anything yeah so I think uh, he, he uh, is keeping a lot of things under wraps but uh, I am working on one of the lead characters uh, for this project Okay. Um, so with your engineering work and the work that you do with your freelancing, you also manage to do a lot of work for your Instagram. So I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you about this because um, when I first got to meet you, you started doing this particular project on Instagram, and this is where you focus most of your work with a lot of characters. Mm -hmm. So how, what were you doing with um, this kind of project? Like you've grown a lot. I remember when you were... Not so many thousands of followers, and now you got tens of thousands. So, what what were you doing there on Instagram? Yeah, I think at the beginning I did a lot of bigger projects. Um, I think if you look at my art station, maybe like if you go back, it, 
I did a lot of projects that took a lot of time, maybe a month or so per project. And, you know, you, you learn a lot uh, by adding a lot of detail, a um, uh, lot of topology. Like, so you learn uh, a whole bunch of different workflows and pipelines. Um, at a certain point, I felt uh, it, it's a lot of work and, and um, I kind of apply the 80-20 rule for a lot of things in life. <laughs> um, so a lot of bigger projects, when I, when I say a bigger project, I mean um, super detailed, you know, multiple texture maps, um, high level of sculpture. Um, it, it takes a lot of work and, and, and usually 20% of the work gets you 80% of the way. And then in order to go to the last 20%, mm -hmm. you have to put in 80% of the work. <laughs> um, Perfect. So, yeah. And then in, in, the, in the dailies is, is when I started thinking, um, maybe I will skip that last 80% of the work uh, because I didn't want to actually like finish, finish it because the time it takes me to finish a project, I could do four more projects. And, and, and the dailies kind of kicked off, like, but usually I, I think at the beginning I started them as kind of like a sketch. Um, uh, and it was kind of like, a, yeah, I'll do a little sketch um, kind of an every day. <laughs> um, and it was kind of a 3D sketch. Usually it was like a bust, or maybe it's a pose. Um, and then I started doing uh, concepts. Um, how far can I get in like an hour or two? Um, so I started doing that uh, for the month of January. This is in 2021. <laughs> and then it kind of took over in the sense that I was like, okay, I'll just continue on February. And then March came along. I was like, I'll just keep going. And it, <laughs> I think after like three months, if you do anything for three months, it becomes like a habit, right? Yeah. So, so after that, it was like, it was like kind of my routine, you know, I do this, do some, do my work and maybe after work, I sit down and just do my daily. <laughs> um, and, um, that was kind of, uh, what the pandemic was like <laughs> for me. Um, cause I had this extra time of not having to commute suddenly. Right. So, so I use that and I, did a sculpt or character a day for a whole year. <laughs> um, and it's not necessarily new characters um, or concept. It's all, it was also like pretty much all of the Disney characters. So if you scroll up on my Instagram and go to like the stories, uh, if you really? think sketchbook, uh, no, the, sorry, the, the highlights, not stories. The, uh, this one. The, yeah, if you go to sketchbook, I'm not uh, sure no, if it's going to no. load on the computer. Okay. Wait, it does. There it is. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Close that one. Yeah, yeah. So those are kind of what they look like. Not very detailed. Um, just like quick, quick kind of sculpting. And I pretty much covered a lot of Disney and DreamWorks characters and um, some original stuff, some concepts by other people, other artists. Um, I guess they're all, all the concepts are by artists. Um, um, yeah, and, and it kind of gave me some momentum into sculpting. And, and another thing it did was I did most of the sculpting or all of the sculpting in ZBrush. Um, uh, I, actually, I began sculpting with Blender a long time ago, but mm. I switched to ZBrush. I think maybe it was like 2018 or something because Blender didn't have that, the tool set for high level of sculpting at the time. Uh, today is a little bit different. Um, but at the time, ZBrush was a better, better product, so I really got used to it. Um, and I would still say ZBrush is the sculpt king still, you know. In that regard. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so I... ZBrush, though, has a pretty big learning curve. Um, it took me a long time to get used to ZBrush. I would say about three months. Um, uh, and doing a sculpt every day really put all that UI 
in the background and with at, to a point I didn't have to actually think about the UI at all. I had all these sharp shortcuts and um, and still do, you know. Um, so it's that was one of the benefits, and I can just focus on the art is one of the big benefits of doing it daily. Um, and um, yeah, um, and the other thing, um, it's kind of a difficult to explain but when you do a lot of sculpture um you begin to get a good understanding of 3d forms in 3d um uh, i think this is something you naturally develop if you do 3d modeling for a long time but um like for example like how much does a cheekbone protrude or you know like how do like muscles weave uh from one to the other it's just like um when you sculpt a lot you, you kind of begin to see things in 3d you know versus um uh, seeing it in flat images um so that's another big benefit um and in the doing studies from other art um you're basically studying the art and that was uh, one of the key things at least for me in like studying character design um and a kind of understanding how actual design decisions are made when it comes to the design, you know, like creating original artwork. Very good, yeah, because one thing I noticed yeah. is that after the first year of work where you did a lot of tribute to Disney, a lot of tribute to the other artists, you started venturing out and creating your own characters as well. Mm -hmm. It was quite good. And also your own yeah. stylistic choices of a number of other characters, well-known Famous people as well, including Andrew Price, which he mentioned as well. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to like these characters with likeness to like famous YouTubers or Drake or Andrew Price, um, or even like uh, Wednesday. So that I think mm -hmm. I saw that art piece before somewhere. What was yeah. your process like? You mentioned like you you understood your anatomy and your work, and you you practically did a crash course on the character design, doing your dailies, working on the anatomy and context. But when it comes to likeness, how did you work that into your style? Yeah, uh, yeah, doing like a three D portrait, like like the Andrew Price one, like is. Uh, it's very beneficial, I think. Um, it's it's a very difficult task. It, like even with this, I didn't actually, you know, hit it completely. Hundred percent. There's a lot of things like not perfect with it. Um, so it, it is a good exercise uh, of being able to hit a mark as far as likeness. And you, once you do a few of those. Um, not like a stylized version, not like, um, you know, um, like a caricature, but like a one-to-one, -one, you know, this is, this is the guy and this is, um, the sculpt and like targeting it to be photorealistic. That's like a monumental task. Like I, I would say like, it is very difficult and it's, it's very hit or miss and like, like the average, you know, person would be able to tell you if it's incorrect, you know? Because we're so good with faces, like humans. Right. Um, so, so it's uh, doing a, that kind of gives you an understanding of what brings likeness. Um, like a few things I learned, like the distance between the corners of the eyes and the corners of the nose and the corners of the mouth. Like that, those ratios play a big, big role in likeness, even if you're pushing it like in a stylized manner. Um, and and like and then um like eyebrows like matter a lot sometimes even more than the eyes themselves um so there are things like that that i i, I learned i mean i'm not like amazing there's like there are artists who are like so good at likeness uh ian spriggs or hussein diva i think that's it. Mm. i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing his name right um to, and like it's uh it's really impressive to me um and, and i feel like maybe like five or six years ago before like all these software started popping up like here at the creator or um unreal engines metahuman um 
like having a portrait sculpture is like it's like an impressive thing it's it's a hard thing to do and you can't really find things and you have to like sculpt little details and skin you know, pores not a lot of brushes or yeah. yeah things were available back then um but yeah like um but yeah that, that's kind of like an everest of the <laughs> 3d modeling <laughs> i feel like it's it's like a, it's like a thing you you can do to like kind of test your strength you know i guess so. and but but at the end of the day that's really not my interest personally like as much as i like the challenge um i really like to focus on the stylized characters um and yeah and uh okay yeah kind of being able to tell a story and like designing the character as intended or adding to it you know Okay, so when it comes to working with the style and the design, so I noticed like after you did these uh, these big flexes of your anatomy and understanding the general structure, what creates a character, the head, the, the lips, the expression, the measurements, you started working on something a lot more characteristic and you started doing, exaggerating some aspects, you started working on something new and then on your portfolio, I've noticed you picked some of your favorite pieces with a lighter background, which is a lot more I guess you could say stylized and characterized characters. Mm. So when it comes to your know-how of getting your Everest climbed up, uh, climbed to this peak of Everest, how did you start to get it into the stylized aspect? Um, yeah, I don't think I actually climbed the peak. Yeah, well, just, you got pretty uh, close. Just to clarify, yeah, you reached I, I don't second think base. anyone actually does it. I mean, there's a few people I could say maybe they're like so amazing that they could just hit like a likeness and like perfect anatomy and you know everything because uh, the complexity in in 3d when it comes to like realistic likenesses and like details is is judging where every vertex is has to be in 3d you know like it's it's not just lining up an image and the face lines up like it has to work if you turn the face a little bit too, you know what I mean? Like it, it it's just ever, like, anyway. Um, yeah. So after you handled it, trying, trying to tackle bigger projects, I think, um, in 2021, I think I, I was thinking like, what do I really actually like to do and want to do? Um, cause I'm, I'm kind of a wild card in a way that I'm not actually, even at the time I wasn't like, trying to get into the industry or um i was kind of doing my own thing so i didn't want to like spend my time you know trying to master something that may may be considered valuable in the industry um that wasn't the goal so I, my goal was basically to make appealing stuff that, where i could have fun and start telling stories and and the dailies like really allowed me to do that like allowed me to make mistakes not worry about things too much like and got me in the habit of posting things even though they're not like perfect and also um kind of having fun you know like um because uh because i realized that uh well, another thing i learned like when you when i have when i have fun with the project like it kind of shows in it you know and yes. versus if i try to force it out <laughs> there's a different feel to it and people kind of pick up on that somehow. That's true. You got to um, have fun. It shows through on how you do it, how you figured out the gesture, how you figured out the general shape and things like that. That's right. True. Yeah. So you said you, you wanted to find the things that made you have fun. How did you get to that conclusion? How did you know what was the thing that you really liked? that made you enjoy the work, the one that told you the story or the one that helped you tell the stories? How did you know? Mm. Yeah, it's a good question. I think you're getting on like inspiration or like what, what do we do anything? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> or why do we do anything? Uh, it, it's like, um, yeah, I, I think I need to like emotionally connect with it. Um, I, uh, like, I try to, 
Uh, a good analogy is music. Uh, Dre, you have a lot of history with music as well. A little, yeah. Um, j- huh? A little, yes. Yeah, so it's just like, when you hear a nice song, like, you can emotionally connect with it, you know? And, and, and like, you can immediately either like a song or not like a song, you know? Like, even in the first instance you hear it. Um, and in a similar way, like, um, I can either connect or not connect with a piece of artwork or like, I just need to have that connection. As long as I have that connection, I, I can build on it. Um, and that's, it's kind of hard to explain. And a lot of the time <laughs> I'm trying to go for a specific emotion and not like an, like a perfect piece of art, you know? Right. Um, like like this one you're showing this one is inspired by the song uh singing in the rain singing in the rain uh, or dancing speak. in the rain dancing that's a good name the yeah. old song you know and, yes. and i think i use that in the real um so it's in like it's from an old movie um like a classic and um uh i think it's like it's about enjoying yourself even on a rainy day <laughs> you know what i mean like it's like uh um that is true i like the shot even if it's raining you're singing in the rain um and <laughs> funny enough like this one i posted uh and i made it purple um and i think i really wanted to make something really purple and poppy and i posted that and I didn't know I posted it on the day that Prince had passed away. Oh. <laughs> and somebody commented on the art saying, hey, you made Purple Rain on the day, today. <laughs> well, that's perfect. <laughs> Good timing, away. riding the waves. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I, I didn't even know that, but uh, it was interesting. Um, maybe it was subliminal, especially considering Prince used to live uh, a few miles from where I am right now. Oh, a natural connection, as someone mentioned to you. <laughs> That's really nice. It's this piece I really love, like the, the colors, the vibe, the lighting that you used, the, the rain effect that you worked. It was a nice piece. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of cheating in this one. Cheating? Um, like, uh, in the sense that are like 3D-wise. Uh, the rain is particle. I'm actually just moving particles down. Uh, and then I have a particle system on the floor that's uh, for the balance effect of the water. Mm-hmm. And then those ones, yeah, those ones are like sculpted pieces of water that pop in and out, <laughs> <laughs> like everywhere. It's uh, very effective. Yeah. And then the lighting is basically, I took one image and I wrapped it in a cylinder uh, and made it an emission material, and then that's what's casting the reflections. On the ground. Yeah. All right. So with this particular place, <laughs> yeah. I like it. You, you've you got the feeling of joy, you got the feeling of the magic and the bright lights mm-hmm. and the highlights of being happy, even though it's raining, and that was the emotion that you had. It. You're tapping yeah. into the regional uh, commemoration of Prince unexpectedly. And you got that connection and you brought that into life. That's that's Mm. quite a beautiful thing. You mentioned earlier that you wanted to understand the tools of ZBrush and you kind of minimized it and focused on the hotkeys and got your workflow. Uh, One thing I mentioned on the social networks is that you've created a very beautiful marriage between ZBrush and Blender. And you mentioned once you like have your pipeline and you understand your tools, uh, you could focus more on the art. So Mm -hmm. when you were doing your dailies, did you have to, did you find difficulties with uh, your pipeline and how did you polish it? It seems like you've got your, your expression and your art well done, but how did you get there? What were those steps that you needed to take to make that workflow work? Right. Um, It's a good question. Like at the beginning, a lot of my dailies are just straight up ZBrush renders that I posted. I didn't, um, I, I, at the first month or two, at least, like I did not want to render them at all, uh, just because that would take time that I didn't want to focus on rendering. I wanted to focus on modeling, right? So I didn't want to render things. 
Uh, just to clarify, like the latest ones I posted, they're not dailies. <laughs> so yes. They're like more my recent ones that I, this one, like usually it's like a week or so that I spend on these. Um, uh, but, but yeah, this throughout the, from beginning from the dailies, just coming into today, like slowly I started adding um, more and more tools, more and more uh, pipeline related things. Um, and I think that's what really helps me with the speed because there's so many things. Uh, once you start doing something daily, you, you realize, oh, I'm just clicking this menu all the time. You know, let me just put a hotkey on that. Uh, there was a lot of that in ZBrush. Um, and then also like lighting and setup, um, getting like the perfect blender start uh configuration so that i don't have to have any um do anything additional things uh, uh yeah and and i also somebody told me a long time ago i think some gave some good advice saying uh get to look dev as quick as possible uh meaning um i try to like render hit render as soon as i can uh meaning uh I was sculpting something in ZBrush, maybe it's like a block out, not, not even, you know, 20% of the way through. I would take it to Blender, set up everything, set up the camera, and then hit render. And then I also do the compositing in Blender. So I have all those compositing nodes already ready. So I just have to put that render through the compositing nodes, which is a separate file. And then I'll have the final image already. And then I go back and iterate that. So it's kind of an um, agile workflow. Um, I would say every, every time I sit down, it's kind of like a sprint, you know? Um, it's, like, um, um, it's like I'm taking the product through the whole pipeline every time. Ah, okay, that's amazing. And there's also a good tip, get it into the render, get, the, um, get your final um, view and silhouette and design. As quick as possible. I like that. Yeah. So when it comes to these dailies, uh, you did it into 2021 and then you just carried on. You started for a month and you carried on. Uh, what was that motivation to help you push through? And also, why did you stop? Um, we'll, start with <laughs> what, we'll start with what got you hooked and then we'll go on to yeah. what made you stop. Yeah, because I've noticed, like, after, like, a month or so, I noticed, like, an improvement in my sculpting. Like, like almost, like, the, very quickly, it, it seems easier. Like, it's more comfortable. You get more comfortable with the programs. Um, it's a lower barrier to entry every time, you know. So that is, like, motivating. It's kind of like you know, lifting some weights and it gets easier. <laughs> mm. Like it's, uh, I wouldn't say I was like improving. I'm actually, I think of myself as a kind of a slow learner actually. Um, but, really? but that little bit of improvement, like is, 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 is very attractive and like, um, and it's good to notice and, you know, motivate yourself. Um, and, and yeah, there were days, um, that were not, you know, you, didn't want to do it at all but but that's the thing about daily like if you do something every day it becomes a habit and then you just have to let it happen you know it's almost like you can't even help yourself <laughs> um you feel strange if you stop exactly yeah exactly so um and um so that kept me going um and pushing and then um yeah just having you know just um i guess you have to be a little bit disciplined but uh it's kind of sticking to it even hard times like it's it's not easy sometimes but um um uh, yeah, you just have to keep going. <laughs> what can I say? You gotta oh, push through. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's it's like it's like that, but it takes time, um, and yeah, you just have to keep going with that. 
Okay. Um, and, yeah, and, and and just to add to that, I think, yeah, w- it, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And then like, and then it, there's kind of like a sunk cost, uh, was sunk cost thing happening, where at a certain point you're like, well, you know, it's September. <laughs> been nine months i can't stop now <laughs> you know? yes like so there's like that so that kind of also keeps you going um and uh it, it's it's uh it's interesting yeah and then i stopped because mm. dailies are they they kind of get to the point of being speed sculpts and i just had a conversation with somebody about this like speed sculpts are great for, for teaching you you know, to get your, your hand going and knowing how to use your brushes and the tools. But you're limiting yourself on what you learn. Um, and then you have to move on to a different field or area uh, or advanced uh, level of learning. Uh, maybe, maybe there's advanced texturing or materials or particles. Um, all of which you might be negating if uh, you solely focused on the the block out and the sculpt, right? Makes um, sense. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I planned it. So I'll, I'll do this for a year. Maybe the next year I won't do dailies, but maybe it's, um, uh, you know, like one or two a week. So I was thinking, and I, I think it's important to keep that momentum up, um, but not to your detriment, you know. Right, getting stuck inside of a rut of a habit without actually progressing and pushing yourself into other things. Got you. Mm-hmm. There's one thing I noticed with your most recent artworks where you mentioned where you take a week or two weeks on a, an individual piece. There was this piece that you worked on where you sculpted every single piece of metal and created the character. You created a series of characters which have hair. You Lately, you've been experimenting with animation with some of your characters focusing on fur and hair and uh, scenes and sets and a lot more materials, a lot more polish and detail into your actual blockouts that you've created, and also the lighting and rendering. Um, I guess mm-hmm. you, you did push yourself to the point where your blockout was on point, doing a new character, uh, taking a reference, getting a, a style, getting a a a Mm -hmm. feature and then you wanted to also keep pushing that same rhythm into working into other aspects but what happened Mm -hmm. to the habit with your daily habit of doing something every day do you work on one of these pieces a little bit every day as well yeah yeah so i am sculpting every day probably more than i did dailies (laughs) oh wow but but i'm doing bigger projects so instead of doing like one character, maybe I'm doing two characters and like five different pop props or something. So it's like, it's like the projects, um, the projects are bigger. I, I just don't post everything. <laughs> so I, I try to keep the momentum going. You know, obviously there are some days I do nothing. I mean, it's rare, but, uh, um, you know, you do need like to rest and, you know, get your kind of mind and body kind of going well Mm -hmm. um at the same time it's just um yeah i try not to burn out like as 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 far as much as i do uh, i don't think i do more than some other people that i know but um i do try to get you know some recharging Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's workouts or you know other forms of entertainment and movies or music uh, yeah exercising and working out I, I do a lot of running um and that has been i don't think i could do any of this without running <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you're working a superhuman lifestyle at the moment oh no, no okay no okay i don't run like i don't know like a marathon or, or iron man or anything but I do, I do running and swimming, but not to like a very high level, but I do spend like an hour a day of doing physical activity. Um, it's usually slow running, but that, that boredom of 
being stuck in a you know exercise room or running it is really good for you i think and also get some it, blood it lets, to your brain you, right? yeah it also gets lets you think a little bit and i and i've gotten a lot of good ideas while running or ideas that i like to uh, have implemented oh, that's really special so I guess with your self-discipline of doing something daily, creating your habits, you've also applied it to your personal life where you're looking after your body, you're looking after your brain, you're getting the blood flowing, you're giving yourself some time to think about what you're doing, you're making the most of your time instead of commuting. Do you still, do you have to commute to work now or are you still working mostly from home these days? Yeah, wow, that, that sounds amazing. <laughs> what you said, I, I want to be that guy. Well, I mean... I do all that, but I, I do have, you know, my like slower days and uh, I do relax sometimes. Uh, but yeah, um, I am a hybrid currently, so I go to work a couple of times a week. Um, although, however, I've been going to work more now because it depends on the project I'm working on. So it, um, there is like less. Um, yeah, so I, like I'm not at home a lot uh or less than i was uh during the pandemic um so maybe that's another thing i, I wouldn't do dailies now because i'm not always stuck at home like i know during the pandemic you're literally stuck at home like <laughs> either you know you're watching tv or you're doing something else so you might as well for me uh, do something useful makes sense yeah so it seems like with this hyper productivity with your work at um at the company that you're at doing these different types of larger projects and yes sometimes your downtime your exercise and things how do you emotionally and mentally handle it i know sometimes i get quite stressed sometimes with with my sense of i need to be productive i need to produce more i need to do more i need better quality i need to be a better quantity i need to get I need better health i need better exercise i i push myself and I get stressed with a lot of the things that I do uh, with your pace and rhythm and the things that you learned working with the dailies working with the habits looking after yourself taking off time on times how did you emotionally mm -hmm. navigate this how did you manage your sense of stress trying to just uh, get out there and put your hands to work uh, um it's a good question. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm stressed really. I think everyone stresses out and it can be tough sometimes. Um, but again, like exercise is good. Like at least for me, like endurance. Um, a lot of people exercise like weights and, you know, like powerlifting or like you know, high intensity workouts. Like those are good. Actually, those are great. Uh, but I think doing endurance stuff, kind of a hidden value of doing endurance stuff is that it gives you space for your brain to relax. Um, like, especially if you're doing something that you're completely zoned out or um, you focused like mentally in a certain activity um, for, you know, a, a longer period versus like, shorter workout so that has helped me a lot <laughs> um endurance uh, yeah uh i'm not like in any way an athlete but um, uh, I, I try to get that that time for physical activity every day um that's kind of probably my priority every day i would say um and in addition to that get a dog i guess <laughs> <laughs> a nice walk a little jog yeah, yeah. Like, Out of the house. They have a dog who's a two-year-old. Um, he very active. Um, I tend to sit at my desk for long periods, and he is very good at getting me out of my chair, <laughs> like every hour or so. You know, like I don't even need to think about it because he'll come and get me. Like he'll paw at my leg or something it's like, it's like come on come on you've been sitting at this computer for too long yeah yeah for him one yeah. hour is like seven hours no yeah almost to the point like these days like i i can't even work like super late like at a certain point 
just around midnight, he will come and like, like whine at me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if he's like um, tired or like kind of energy. He can't sleep. That's why he wants to like get my attention or something. But, but yeah, he's not. Yeah, he doesn't like it if I'm working and everybody else is asleep for some reason. <laughs> Makes sense. Like, why are you awake? Yeah, <laughs> let's do something. I don't know what he's thinking. But uh, yeah, pets are great. Good. I like this yeah. idea of him practicing endurance with your body, with your mind as well, getting out of the computer, getting some perspective with the work that you do. This clearly shows with the quality and the way that you've improved everything. The details in your textures, the, the general mm -hmm. styles and the clothes and fur and everything there. The eyes, they've become a lot more alive than they used to be. You've really improved a lot. But you also mentioned um, your work with uh, freelancing as well. And you also mentioned you like to work off the backs of an inspiration and concepts of other artists. So I wanted to ask you concerning inspiration. Mm -hmm. What helped you drive your style and helped you drive anatomy? What made you, what were your biggest inspirations during the dailies and also right now? What's your foundation right. to your style? Great question. So, um, I, I learned, um, let's see, I learned anatomy from Aaron Blaze and Raphael Grossetti. I don't know if you know those people, but Raphael Grossetti is like this amazing 3D artist. He's like one of, probably one of the best sculptors out there. <laughs> um, he works, um, I'm not sure exactly where he works. Last time I checked, he was at uh, Sony Santa Monica working on God of War. Uh, he was the lead for that game. Um, wow. he, yeah, and... Um, but um, he's a super nice guy. I met him a couple of times. He, like the way he sculpts, he's very accurate. <laughs> like it is with every stroke, and like kind of like no undoes, no smoothing kind of scenario. Like it's amazing to watch him work. So I've taken a couple of his workshops and like really, uh, he has a great anatomy course as well. Uh, yes, he is another level. And he, yeah. And, yeah, so and uh, and there's other people like uh, Leticia Gillette. Um, she's a Disney modeler. Um, and she has some great techniques on how to make your own characters and how to model very clean. Um, yeah, so and and then um, still an Ekron and Gabriel Soares, like, um, these are all like 3D artists that I've learned a lot from, I would say. Um, simplifying, um, modeling clean. Um, yes, because I was yeah, having so a look at your wireframes, for example. Uh, the wireframes yeah. are absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, so those are the character modeling arts, but I do look at a lot of 2D artists for reference, like, and designing. Like, even if you're designing from a 2D concept, or if you're modeling from a 2D concept, you're still designing in 3D, because not everything is captured in a 2D concept, no matter how detailed it is. Um, there's maybe a certain level of anatomy, certain level of like proportions that you could fix or improve or make better while sticking with the concept. Um, so I think it's still important to learn design, like concept design. Um, so like Aaron Blaze, TB Choi, um, Carter Goodridge. Um, those are some of the people that I um, really follow and um, uh, really look at and kind of study. Yes, so I see one of these uh, creature art teacher sculpting his airbrush mm -hmm. with Tony Cipriano with the bears. I noticed that you also created some bears yourself. Was this a practice? Yeah, this that was after the when I created the bears, but uh, yeah, that was that. Um, this was also an Aaron Blaze concept uh, from a while back. 
Yeah. It was a while. Uh, yeah. Man, you really yeah. sharpened yeah. your skills. You've yeah. been a huge inspiration to me. Like, I, I've been wanting to have you on the show for quite some time. And this is like quite a high episode at 99, mainly because seeing you progress through your dailies in 2021, and then going, seeing you push through. Uh, publishing your reels and your different techniques, your style, your consistency, your your improvement. I remember earlier in the days, your your gesture was a little bit stiff, but you managed to yeah. push through it. You made it a lot more uh, dynamic and a lot more uh, expressive. Mm -hmm. You've also started to capture your emotions a lot better and you put your design mind to work and also with the references and your things. You've been a huge inspiration to me early in self-discipline but also your sense of a you say you're a slow learner but you're a diligent learner and that is certainly a powerful tool to have having the endurance endurance to stick to it so i'm actually really happy that you could share this with um the people here so i wanted to ask you with your learning career i know you've done a lot of things right but if you could go back and tell yourself maybe six years ago when you're starting out, getting back into Blender, getting starting to learn Zeta Brush, if you could tell yourself some shortcuts, what would they be to help you learn? It's an interesting question because I've, yeah, when, when artists talk about their journey, like it's always different, like in the sense, five years ago it was like completely different than the 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 playing field today you know so it like their journey is is not possible today like it's so it, it's it's difficult to say because um you can't judge the future so it, you, you don't know exactly what path will lead you where because uh, the industry our industry moves so fast you know um all these new tools new technologies new styles like like spider verse for example everyone's <laughs> gunning for that style right now and it, so it's like um kind of all over the place but personally um uh, yeah I, hmm. I don't know like I, I think the one of the most valuable things that you could have uh is your motivation like, like it, it doesn't matter if you're you know drawing with a pencil and sculpting with clay just if you have that drive to keep going um and not have that burnt out mm -hmm. i think is the most important thing um and and you have to like allow yourself to feel that drive you know put more wood into it, it, it it's really it's kind of a conceptual thing you can't you know, I don't know how you do that or how anyone would do that. But I think mm. it's important to have that motivation. Because I've seen some people where that has kind of evaporated. And, like, they're kind of continuing their art as a job or, or something. But they don't really have that excitement of doing something uh, for the first time. Or, you know, <laughs> I remember the first thing I rendered in Blender was, like, a mug. A mug. <laughs> Model the mug and uh, rendered and looked like ceramic i'm like oh my gosh it's the best thing ever it looks so good you know like because <laughs> because it had the highlights and everything so it's like it's i think it's important to have that kind of nurture that the motivation the excitement and, and the motivation to push through yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and if you if you're ever in a situation where that is getting like I don't know, it's getting stomped on or maybe it's like a really bad project or like you're burning yourself out in a certain way. Maybe it's time to step away from that, you know, because cause the cost of that is a lot more than maybe that project, you know. Um, um, yeah, so that, that all being said, um, probably to do, to study more fundamental stuff earlier more um, fundamentals that, earlier yeah like anatomy design um this drawing like draftsmanship like there's a uh, i was 
guilty of asking this question from the beginning of people like do you need to be able to draw in order to sculpt and a lot of people will say no uh, mm -hmm. i know a lot of modelers and sculptors who don't really draw or aren't particularly good at um but it helps a lot it is what everybody says it helps a lot i think that being said just learn how to draw if you want to sculpt because because if it's going to help you then, then it will help you so maybe do more of that um um it'll make you a better sculptor okay and uh have you been practicing uh drawing lately um yeah i actually i do a little bit of drawing every day just not not anything good but like like studying anatomy for example is, is i think is better done in 2d than 3d 3d anatomy studies are great like there are some courses out there for 3d anatomy like uh you know really get you to understand anatomy but it takes a lot of time so like um yeah, and Andres, you've been uh, working with gesture drawings and yes, like yeah, I'm sure you noticed the improvement or you learned stuff from it. Oh, a lot, yeah. Actually, one of my yeah. study buddy, my study buddy, is here today, connected in the audience. So I'm very happy you're connected here. It's cool to talk about this because it's all done in your server as well. I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. all right, so. That's really nice. I like this, um, where this is going and what you've done with this and your, your concept of your discipline. You've also managed to just flow with the work, flow with the, the education. You've adapted every day. You've adapted the tools. You, um, you've sharpened your skills and now you're sharpening even more skills uh, with that sense of uh, concept and also your, your personality and not being too hard on yourself, giving, you, giving yourself some time to, to do some exercise, to be with your dog to work on your life as well it's quite nice so getting into the technical nitty-gritty um, what would you like to see improve with your pipeline concerning tool sets or brushes or think your workflow with set of brush and blender what would you like to see improve in the near future to help you tell your story better mm -hmm. Spicy question. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it, it is, there is a lot. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do quickly or like things that I spend a lot of time on that potentially could be easier. Um, first of all, I, I do the compositing in Blender. Like, uh, I don't show that a lot in anywhere, but it is great. The <laughs> Blender Compositor works very well. It is basically like Nuke, but not to, you know, that level of speed. And and the slowness of that really gets me sometimes. <laughs> like, like, you know, you wire up like an image and it takes like a few seconds to load up. Like it's, if you do an edit, like it's, it's very slow. Like, I know they've improved it heavily recently, but mm -hmm. it's still like, ways behind like resolve or nuke or after effects right um that would be great <laughs> um have you tried the real-time compositor built inside the compositor of blender 4.0 before i haven't tried the real-time compositor but i mean i don't see a lot of need for that at least for my workflow you yeah, well well, it's a little bit of news just to let everybody know. In Blender 4.0, if you turn on the experimental compositor and you go inside your preferences, try out the experimental compositor and then go inside your compositing node. Uh, instead of using tile to full frame, use the real time GPU. This will give you almost instant updates inside of the nodes in your render image. Mm -hmm. so that might answer your question there in the future, hopefully. No. Potentially, yeah. Um, yeah, so that compositing is, is one speed. thing. And, and I think it's really valuable, the compositor inside of Blender, because all the other tools that will resolve is, is free, but um, all the other tools are pretty expensive, you know. Um, 
yeah anyway um sculpting you know like sculpting has come a long ways but i would say it's still a little bit lacking um in blender like uh, a lot of presets in zbrush um for brushes and like brush presets yeah like yeah brush presets like there's probably with zbrush you get like maybe 20 different smoothing brushes just for smoothing oh that's nice yeah so it's like there's different kinds of smoothing there's smoothing certain crevices there's smoothing just the peaks there's smoothing like there's like smooth stronger which like smoothens a lot like i use that a lot because when you have a really high poly model and you want to smooth the big area you use that smooth brush so it smooths a lot faster so mm. that kind of like selection is not there in blender i mean it might be there but it's not like you know, without having to play around with settings a lot. Right, so, yeah. That's something I've been wanting to build into Beef Artist because I've been creating these brush panels in the sculpt mode. Yeah. And yeah. when I have a brush panel, I can actually have them inside panels here and list as many brushes as I want based on the category. So I could right, have, right. I could expose 20 draw brushes or 20 smooth brushes mm. in the future. But I just need to find a way to add them. Yeah. Yeah. And and then like there's a workflow that I do in ZBrush where, where I use Z remesher. And that's a big thing. I think there is something like that in Blender that it's purchased, right? It's not free, like quad remesher or something like that. Yes. Um, I'm sure it's good, but like ZBrush's Z remesher is very powerful, very quick. You can go through many iterations really quickly and you can zero mesh according to face sets or in Blender you call them face sets and ZBrush you call them polygroups. Um and yeah, so just, the that's a workflow that in ZBrush is very good for stylized um anatomy. Uh, yeah, um I'm I'm sure Blender will continue as the improvement and it'll get there uh i but, certainly uh, hope so it's yeah it, yeah like i said it's not and then the ability to like handle a ton of like models um like even for 3d printing i know somebody was saying that after a certain poly count you can't decimate it in blender uh like the, dec the decimation tool is is kind of slow yeah. yeah yeah um yeah so zbrush you know you can i've seen people model in you know like 50 million polygons maybe 100 million polygons um no lag it, yeah <laughs> like i don't i never go up that high but if it can handle that much you know like 10 million polygons is nothing with ZBrush, which is, which is great. Yeah, that would be nice. Blender's uh, engine has to handle a lot of things as well. Pretty tricky game. But it's nice to hear. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it was nice. Lots of good things to learn about and something I would like to listen back to in the future. We're getting close to, we've hit the one hour mark, which means we've kind of have to call this uh, pretty much a close. But if you're still here and you're still listening, which we do, we had a nice crowd today. Um, I would like to open up the microphone if you have a question for Prashan before you go. I hope you have a, you're okay with a little bit more time. And I highly recommend you visit his art station. Visit the Instagram. The Instagram is high quality. The reels are high quality. Everything that you produce and everything that you do is absolutely fun to see. And I'm happy to see it all when you do. And I also want to mention um, before we go, before I open the microphone, that Before Artist 3.6.1 was released this week, which has the real time GPU compositor built in. And it also has geometry nodes repeat zone. 
which gives us serial loops just like we can with Houdini inside Geometry Notes. And we have the new sculpt brush panels inside of for Artist. They might be subject to change. And there's a number of other different things, but I'm going to link you the video, the feature release video, so you guys can see what's new with b for Artist 3.6.1. I'm getting much more involved with that. And before I am, um, and one last little notice before the we open up the microphone is that in two weeks, this is episode 100 of the Q&A and Critique. So Prashan, I'm hugely honored that you've managed to be number 99. I couldn't think of a better number. But with number 100, we have a special guest. I'm not sure who yet, maybe someone that I know very well or and there might be also a free giveaway so stay tuned for two weeks time from now to have the free giveaway and to celebrate episode 100 so with that if you have a question raise your hand and we'll ask them away if anything i will invite you to the stage Slink says he's already got two free giveaways. <laughs> uh, White Rooster says he's free for the giveaway. Slink mentioned that the quad remesher add-on was made by the same person who made the Zeta remesher, the same developer. Mm -hmm. um, Leaf recommends for making habits is to get an accountability buddy, which really helps. I highly agree with that. Um, I'm kind of drunk mentioned his challenge that he's always stops at, uh, at day three at best with the exercise. But it helped him to do the blend royales every Monday, every night, and then, which is another thing about accountability. Because he knows there's a limited time constraint and he's willing to accept what he did without being stuck with perfection. That is a good point. Yeah, that's the thing, right? I mean, you don't want to like overburden yourself by doing something really big every day. Um, like, set it, set it, I don't know, like put a limited amount of time and then, you know, make something small can learn something like a small lesson every day maybe a little time limit yes yeah. okay looks like we nobody has any questions but uh, for now that's perfectly fine i will um i guess we can wrap it up so thanks prashant for everything for also explaining a little bit about your journey is also it's brought me a sense of relief to know that you do handle your stress quite nicely by not giving yourself stress and that has you have been highly productive, almost superhuman with your art and your learning journey. But at the same time, you haven't been pushing yourself to the limits to avoid the burnout, which I think is very healthy and is very inspiring. I'm glad you've figured that out. So thanks, thanks for that. having me, Grace. Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm going to close the stream here and I'll see you guys in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs>